Welcome back to the JavaScript Essential Training. I'm Mike King, your host. And in this tutorial, we'll actually be talking about the switch statement in JavaScript. So we, in the last tutorial, we looked at conditional statements in JavaScript, and the switch statement is a type of conditional statement inside of JavaScript. In our previous example, we used the if and the else if statements in JavaScript to direct our code based on a condition that we set up inside those conditional statements. Controlling the branching of our code using the if statement is a common use of the conditional statements in most programming languages. But what if you had a large group of conditions that you wanted to test against if inside your conditional statement? So in other words, instead of just a few different conditions, I've got a very large group of conditions I'm testing against. There's a better conditional statement to handle that type of condition. For that type of condition, we can use the switch statement. This type of conditional statement became available in JavaScript 1.2 and has been very popular since its introduction. And the switch statement is available in most programming languages. The first language I was introduced to it was in C. But I mean, as you learn programming languages, you're going to see there's a type of switch statement in almost all programming languages. The object of a switch statement is to get an expression to evaluate and choose from several different branches based on the value of the expression. The code checks each case against the value of the expression until a match is found, and based on the match, uses that string of statements for that particular case match. So you'll notice here what I've got is I've got a line of code, and I've got case 1, 2, 3, and 4, and then I've got a default statement, and based on the, the match of the case depends on what statement break I use, or what statement group that I'm using. So the objective of a switch statement is to get an expression to evaluate and several different statements to execute based on the value of the expression. The interpreter checks each case against the value of the expression until a match is found. If nothing matches, a default condition will be used at the very end of the code to flow through and follow through with the execution of the code. And you'll notice once the statements are executed, it goes back to the flow of the code line. The break statement indicates the end of a particular case if the break statements were omitted, the interpreter would continue executing each statement in each of the cases. So we actually have to have that break statement inside our statements. Once we determine the case we're going to use inside that case statements, we actually have to have the break or else all the statements would execute inside all the case statements. So again, let's look at the syntax. We've got a switch, then inside parentheses we put the expression we're testing against. And then I've got my case with condition one, case with condition two, case with condition three. And again, all the statements fall inside those cases. And again, I end each case with a break statement. At the end, I have a default statement. So JavaScript supports conditional statements, which are used to perform different actions based on different conditions. In this tutorial, we're going to examine the switch statement in JavaScript. So let's move into our development environment and demonstrate what we talked about in our presentation. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and drop out of our presentation and into our development environment. Let's go ahead and confirm that we've got the Apache server up and running. I'm going to go ahead and load Sublime Text 3, which will be my text editor I'll be using for the demonstration, and Google Chrome will be the browser. I'm still in actual section 2 of the JavaScript introduction tutorials. First thing I want to do, let's go ahead and do a save as on my template file because I don't want to overwrite it. And I'm going to save it as switch underscore one dot HTML. I'm going to go ahead and add a title to the page, switch statement. Let's go ahead and put an H3 inside my container. Again, just switch statement. Go ahead and close out that H3. I'm going to go ahead and save those changes to my switch underscore one.html. Then I'm going to go ahead and load that up inside my browser window. Excellent. So conditional statements in JavaScript and most programming languages are a way to have your application make a decision based on a condition that's being checked. In our first example, I'm going to use basically a little grading matrix and use a switch statement to determine what grade and what the feedback is to the user. So inside my script tag, I'm going to go ahead and open up a script tag inside of my document. So let's go ahead and close that tag. And then inside those script tags, I'm actually going to copy this from my exercise file so you don't have to watch me type it. And we'll talk about this as we put it in place. 
you notice I've set up a variable called grade and I've given it a grade of A. Then I've got a document.write code is executing from the application branch. So what I'm doing here is I'm showing you where we're in the branch. Then I show you where we enter the switch block because now I've got code entering the switch block. And inside my switch, let me go ahead and clean up some of this formatting. Inside my switch statement, I'm looking for grade. That's the variable that I'm comparing against. So I've taken that value in the grade variable that we just created and I'm looking for a case. And I'm saying here, and I'm actually going to move this up top. Normally I leave these up top. So my first case is going to be case A. If that's there, I'm going to perform a document.write. And normally how I do these is I actually indent them like so. Document.write, excellent work. BR. Then I'm looking at case B. And I want you to notice that case B, these are ending in a colon. When I end the case, I'm ending it in a colon. When I end the statements, I'm ending them in a semicolon. So I've got case A, and again, ends in a colon. Then the statements for case A end in a semicolon. Then I come back and look at case B. And this was actually, now I'm looking to see if my grade variable contains the letter B. And I'm looking at those. Let me go ahead and fix my formatting here for C. Let's go ahead and fix the formatting for D. Once I get this set up, formatted correctly, I'm going to go ahead and let you pause. And then we're looking for F, case F. And then my default case is just going to basically be unknown grade. It's got a grade in there, but doesn't know how to recognize it. Again, keep in mind, everything is ending in semicolons other than the case statements themselves. They are ending with a colon. Let's go ahead and save all those changes. And I also have a couple of write statements at the bottom to tell me when I'm exiting the switch block and I'm back in normal code flow. I'm going to go ahead and bring all the script tags back up. Get this stuff centered on the screen. Great time to pause if you want to go ahead and type it in. If I go into the browser window, I'm going to go ahead and refresh. I want switch underscore one dot HTML. You'll notice it says code is executing from the application. Now I'm entering the switch block. Excellent work. And the reason I've got excellent work is because my grade variables holding the letter A. So it's actually picking up the excellent work from here and the line break. And then it's coming down and telling me exiting the switch block and then we're back in normal document flow. And actually I forgot to put my line break there. So I get a line break at that one also. Save the change, refresh the browser. So now it says exiting the switch block. We are back in normal application flow. If I were to change the value of the variable, let's make this a C. Save that change, refresh my browser. Now you'll notice, do you really want to be average? And again, the reason we're seeing that response is because it looked at the case, it found the case C, it executes that line of code, then it breaks out of the case and goes back into normal document or normal code flow. That's why we see the exiting the switch block and we're back in normal application flow. If I were to change this to the value F, save that change, refresh my browser window, now you're saying you'll be repeating this class. And again, we see that because that's the actual text that's typed in for that particular case. And if I were to make it anything other than a letter, that's part of our case statement. If I were to save those, now it's going to give me the default unknown grade because it doesn't recognize Z in any of the case statements that it has. So it actually execute the, executes the default code based on the default that it found inside that variable inside of our case. Let's go ahead and save all those changes. All right, so let's look at a switch statement that's a little more complex. I'm going to go ahead and do a save as. I want to save this as switch underscore two dot HTML. I'm going to go ahead and pull all the code out of here in between our script tags. Let's pull everything out. Save those changes. And now let's go in and load up switch underscore two. Shouldn't have anything there yet. And all we have is our title. Perfect. So the switch expression is evaluated once. It actually looked at that expression and evaluated it once. The value of the expression is compared with the values of each case. If there's a match, the associated block of code is executed based on what we saw in the last example. So let's go ahead and add a new switch statement. This one's going to be a little more complex than what we looked at a minute ago. 
I'm going to go again, copy this from my exercise file so you don't have to watch me type it. And this is inside of my script tags. So I'm going to grab the case statement first because I actually have a little bit of code that's outside my script tags. So I'm going to come down inside the script tags. I'm going to go ahead and paste this in. You'll notice I've created a function. And my function is actually going to be, let me go ahead and format this a little better. My function is actually going to contain a few variables and a switch statement. So you see I've got this function check fruit. Then I create a variable called text and then a variable called fruits and equal document dot get element by ID text box. We haven't created this yet, but we're going to in a minute. And it's going to grab the value from that. And then it's going to run through a switch statement. And when it gets to the end, it's actually going to take a reply and put it back to inner HTML and text. So let's go ahead outside my script box so you can see what we're actually doing here. I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of HTML so that this actually functions. I'm going to come right under my H3. I'm going to put an input with an ID of text box, type of text box, and a value. I'm just going to give it a default value of grapes. Then I'm going to put a button on click, check fruit, that's actually going to run this function. Remember, we've got to run the function. Until that function is called, nothing happens. So I'm actually using this button on click event to call my function, and it's going to check it based on the value inside my text box. And there's the ID for text box. So it's going to go get the value that I've got typed inside there. It's going to check it against that function. And then this reply, if you look at the bottom here, document.getElement by ID reply, I'm actually going to take whatever text I generate from this. You'll notice I'm actually updating this text variable with each one of these cases, and I'm going to put it inside that div with the ID of reply. So we're using a lot of the different features and functions that we've learned about JavaScript in the last group of tutorials, and we're starting to put them together to make them work together as a small application. And basically, that's what we're doing here. We're actually making a small application that's going to check using a switch statement. What well, fruit we've added. Let me go ahead and get this center. Let me pull out some of the blank spaces so that you can get all this typed in. Great time to pause if you want to go ahead and type in the script code. Then I'm going to go ahead and scroll up. And again, great time to pause if you want to type in that input, the button, and the P tag with the appropriate IDs. Let's go ahead and save all those changes. Let's go into our browser, refresh the browser window, go get switch to underscore HTML. You'll notice by default I've got grapes in there because that's what I've actually put in the value. And grapes is one of my cases, so if I were to click the switch, grapes are one of my favorite one of my favorites. And it tells you grapes are one of my favorites. So that's for that particular case. If I were to type in orange and select that, I'm not a fan of oranges. And that's what it actually says there. If I were to type clementine, check that one, like an orange, but easier to peel. So basically it's looking through the case statements and it's finding the fruit and then bringing in the text for that particular box based on what the case statement has inside the statements of that case. If I type something that's not there, the fruit's not listed. And actually, I spelled it completely wrong. Should be listed anyway, but still, got to spell it right. So another, another good example of how we use the case statement. I've got a group of different case statements. This time I've actually used an input box, an input text box, to actually grab a value, put it into a variable, and then check it against a list inside my case statements. And then I take the reply, and using JavaScript, get element by ID, using that reply ID, I'm actually putting the inner HTML, putting that text, my reply text, back into my document. So again, we're using a lot of the features and functions that we've learned about JavaScript in previous tutorials to actually demonstrate how this case statement works. And what I meant to say is how the switch statement works. We're using a lot of the things that we've learned in previous tutorials to demonstrate how the switch statement works inside of JavaScript. All right, so let's look at one more example on using the switch statement inside of JavaScript. But this time I want to use it with a built-in function. I want you to see that there's a lot more that we can do with this than just check variables. So what I want to do, let's go ahead and do a save as. 
let's save this as switch underscore three dot html and again this will all be available inside your exercise folder if you've purchased the tutorial i'm going to go ahead and remove all the code from my script tags let's go ahead and scroll down just a little bit i'm going to go ahead and remove all this upper code won't be needing that for this demonstration let's go ahead and save all those changes Let's go in and refresh the browser and grab switch underscore three dot HTML. And all we should have there is our title, which is what we have, our H3 title. Now I'm going to go in and grab another switch statement that I've just generated for our demonstration. I'm going to come inside my script tags. And what we're doing here is I've got a switch statement that's actually going in and it's looking at a new date and it's saying get day. So the getDay method returns the weekday as a number between 0 and 6 inside of JavaScript. 0 being Sunday, Monday being 1, Tuesday being 2, etc. And what I'm doing is I'm using that weekday number to calculate what the weekday is. So I'm actually using this built-in method in JavaScript. I'm saying, let's get the day. So it's going to return a number to me. And then I'm going to take that number. And based on the number, I'm going to determine what day it is. And then I'm going to display that inside my browser window. I can tell you that I'm actually recording this on a Monday. It's a Monday morning, actually almost Monday afternoon. And so when I see this, I should actually see Monday in my display. I'm going to go ahead and save all our changes. I'm going to go ahead and scroll up so you can get this typed in. There is our script. Great time to pause if you want to type it in. I'm going to go ahead and make sure we got switch underscore three dot loaded inside of our browser window. And you'll notice it tells me Monday. And again, I won't be able to change that until tomorrow because it's actually getting that from the get day method, the date method inside of JavaScript. It's pulling it off my PC and it's telling us that, yep, that's returned to one and a one is Monday and I'm displaying the day on the screen. When JavaScript code interpreter reaches a break keyword, it breaks out of the switch block. And we talked about that in the earlier exercise. And I want to show you what I mean by that. If I take this break keyword out, because we know it's returning a, a one for Monday. I'm going to go ahead and save the change, refresh my browser window. Now you'll notice it goes right to Tuesday because it's overwriting, since it didn't break here, it's overwriting the variable day and giving it Tuesday. If I were to take it out of Tuesday, save the change, it's going to do the same thing, but now it's actually going to get a one. It's going to apply Monday. Then it's going to apply Tuesday. Then it's going to apply Wednesday. And we could prove that if I were to actually just take this, I'm going to go ahead and copy this and I'm going to put this up inside case one. So I want to write day and then I want to add to it a BR tag so we can actually give it a line feed. And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to put this under Tuesday because again, we don't have a break tag. So I should actually get to see the Monday since we know it's returning a one, I'm going to see Monday. Then I'm going to see a Tuesday. Then it's going to end with a Wednesday because we finally have a break tag. So if we save those changes, refresh our browser window, now we see Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And again, we're seeing that because we're returning the value of one, but because I forgot to put the break tag in, I can fix this just by adding a break right here. Because I forgot to put that break tag in, it's actually going into the next case statement. This time it won't. I'm going to return the one. It's going to stop there because I actually have the break there. Refresh my browser window. Now all we're going to see is the Monday Monday. We're getting the second Monday because we're actually seeing it down here also. So break tags are extremely important in our switch statements. Don't forget them because they can cause you some serious bugs that can drive you a little crazy. I know I've gotten bit by that bug quite a few times where I'll accidentally forget a break statement inside of a switch statement. And I'm getting all these returns that I don't understand why, because a lot of times they're not near as simple as my little day of the week thing here. Some switch statements can be extremely complex. And I have been known, I've actually got some switch statements on some applications that I've written that have a couple hundred lines of code inside the case. So they're doing a whole lot of stuff. And if I forget to put that break in there, it can cause me all kinds of grief. So again, just wanted to do a fast demonstration on why that break statement is important. Don't forget it as you're doing your demonstrations. I hope you, or as you're writing your applications, I hope you enjoyed the demonstrations on the switch statement in JavaScript. The next thing I think we're going to look at is nested statements, next nested conditionals inside JavaScript. So I look forward to seeing you in that tutorial.